In this video, we are going to talk about the BFD, BFD of dehydration or the process flow diagram. Okay, mainly what happens as a, a dehydration process is that we have a contactor or absorber. This is a so this is an absorber, or sometimes we call it contactor. Contactor. Okay, at the bottom, we enter the natural gas. Or in this case, it would be called a wet gas because it includes water vapor. And from the top, we we will have here lean glycol. We talked about the concept of lean, which is means clean or doesn't have any water vapor. So we have here our lean glycol. The lean glycol will move down, and the wet gas will move up. And here you will have a contact where. Um, the absorption process happen okay or the dehydration after that the wet gas will be a dry gas because the glycol will take all the water vapor from it or most of it okay and our lean glycol will exit from here as a rich glycol or the glycol with water vapor okay after that this glycol will be fed to a regenerator regenerator at the regenerator we apply heat heat so at the bottom you most of the time you will have here a reboiler the reboiler is to increase the temperature okay so most of the time it's a heater the heat added here will force the rich glycol okay so we will have a rich glycol here to remove the water vapor from it so here you will have the water vapor separated water vapor separated from the glycol and the glycol will be fed again to the absorber here okay so this is a general idea about um, the bfd of um, the dehydration here we remove the water vapor by a lean glycol and it exit as a rich glycol here we, this is the reverse process we apply heat uh, by applying the heat you are stripping or removing water vapor from the rich glycol and you have a lean glycol okay let's have a look at uh, the bfd in another form okay if we look here this is our absorber this one uh, the absorber or a conductor the glycol conductor where we remove water at the bottom we have our wet gas it enters from here when it enter it suddenly hit this this at the inlet or at the entrance because it forces the water to be in the to flow to the bottom okay and the natural gas will flow up okay uh, here the natural gas is moving up and the link glycol is moving down which means here at these trays we will have a contact between the glycol and the wet gas okay the natural gas water vapor will be removed and it will exit as a dry gas in this case the glycol will absorb the water and it exit as a rich glycol okay here it enters this this is a regenerator section it enters from the top and the reboiler here is to heat the water vapor to exit and at the bottom here the reboiler here the glycol will pass and here you will have your lean glycol which will be pumped again and the cool here this is a cooler to lower the temperature and the lean glycol will enter again uh, the glycol conductor okay let's run this video it's our wet gas entering the vapor is uh, water vapor and natural gas is moving up the glycol is going to absorb the water and it exit from here our dry gas will exit from the top okay this is the direction the red line uh, arrow is the direction of the uh, movement here we will have our rich glycol entering here to be regenerated the water vapor is stripped from the top and here we have our lean glycol this is a pump to pump the lean glycol and this is a cooler to lower the temperature here this is a, here we have a heat exchange okay this is a heat exchange between this is a uh, rich dark green is rich and the, this light green is uh, the lean okay this is how the pft of the uh, dehydration looks like
Now we are going to create our case at Aspen Heises. During the exam, you will be given the case. Okay, the case, we, the case that I'm going to create now, you, are, you will be given it. So you, you don't have to create it. But I'm going to do this because uh, most of the viewers aren't familiar with the, um, how to create the component list or the material stream. And I think this is a good chance to make sure that you are a good Aspen Hisis user before being tested as Aspen Hisis expert user. So here we are going to create a new, a new case. Okay. Uh, sometimes you can open a case from a local example. This is something that is built in in Aspen Hisis. Okay. So now we have our uh, simulation environment before starting anything it's required to add a fluid package and a component list okay so at the beginning we are going to add our component list in this case i'm going to tell you what is our component list first we need to add nitrogen in order okay it's recommended uh, to add it in order because after that we are going to add numbers so you you should follow me with the numbers too, okay h2s so this is our acid gas carbon dioxide this is another acid gas uh, we are going to have methane so double click here methane ethane propane and isobutane normal butane isobutane then normal butane after that we need to add also water water okay so you can write water or h2o and finally we need to add teg or our triethylene uh, glycol uh, because this is the one that we are going to use in dehydration okay so now our component list is done after that we are going to uh, go to the fluid package most of the time as as been user you add and most of the time you add pink pencil but in this case you have glycol so in this case we are going to look uh, to the one that works with glycols okay if you don't know you can use the method assistant it help you to find the best uh, fluid package to use but here we have a uh, one related to glycol called glycol package okay this one to be added you must have a glycols added to the component list which already we have done okay so now we have added our component list and also our fluid package so we can go to the simulation okay as a simulation we are going to create our material our first material stream this one and double click to open it this one will be called our inlet gas our inlet gas okay the we have the temperature we are given that the temperature is 30 degree and the pressure is 6 to 0 05 okay and we also have the molar flow to be we have it uh, in unit kilogram mole per hour uh, it's 498.1 okay so now we have added uh, this conditions you still have unknown composition so now we are going to enter the composition from the worksheet go to the composition and as the nitrogen we are going to have 001 okay after that this screen will open so you are going to add the composition and as a total must be equal one okay so o one five five o two eight four o eight nine eight nine o three ten okay after that we have o point one four eight Following this, O O five nine, O O three, O O one, triple zeros five, and zero, and finally zero. Okay, so the total here equal to one. Okay, now we have our material stream uh, 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 status is okay because it's well defined. Okay. After that, we are going to add another material stream. This material stream will be related to the TEG. Okay, so we are going to fit the TEG separately, not we not injected with 
the material stream. So we have the TEG feed or triethylene glycol. This is our inhibitor. We are going to feed it at temperature of 50 and the, at the same pressure, it's 6 to 5 kilopascal. And the standard ideal liquid volume flow, we have this value, okay, to be for 0.4543, okay, meter square per meter cube per hour. Okay, and the composition, we have the composition here. We have for water to 0 0.01, okay, and for the glycol to be 0 0.99, okay. So the total here is one, so we have the composition and our material stream is good, okay. Um, what else? Uh, here we need to edit something that, here this is a mass fraction, not a mole fraction, okay. So after adding this, now here we are going to enter the values again, 0 0.1 and 0 0.99, okay? And okay. Sometimes you have a mass fraction or a mole fraction, just to be careful with the data given, okay? Now we have our feed stream. Now we are going to uh, do saturation for the dry gas feed, maybe in the next video.